I would like to start with my heartfelt condolences to every Israeli and Palestinian family that are grieving and suffering. My dad always told me that the Jewish community in faith are our cousins. So I am sending love. I started this week extremely fearful and I've ended this week in complete despair. I've seen many wars in Gaza as I grew up, but nothing like this. I'd visit Gaza every summer for six weeks at a time. I've experienced gunfire at our home, rocket attacks. Um, there's been a time when my house in Darbala was hit by a number of missiles. Uh, another time Israeli soldiers took over our home for three days because it was the highest home in the area and it was a lookout point. We are used to suffering and being fearful. This time is different. Normally, once the death toll would reach a high enough number, the world would ask for restraint. But the number of the deaths are soaring. Mostly children in Gaza is being turned to rubble. No food, no water, no electricity. We are seeing an attack on humanity. And my heart feels like it's starting to turn to stone. Gaza has been obliterated like never before. My mum has said in the past eight days there's not been a lit up for more than 10 minutes. Conferences, friends, I wish to share with you my two biggest fears. One is that 2.2 million people will die through military attack, door-to-door -door killings and starvation. My second fear is that Gaza will no longer exist. The dehumanizing language which is being used by the Israeli government, it never heard before, is terrifying. Even more terrifying is the fact that the world is enabling. Instead of sending spy planes, the UK should be sending supplies. We are not watching a natural disaster. This can be stopped. But what we are watching is an unimaginable horror. Families of 20 people being wiped out just like that. My brother is an ER doctor and the hospital is overran. His nurse from friend who came from another department to the ER to help found both of his own children dead. Yesterday, my cousin Mahmoud was out walking with friends. He returned home and after five minutes, he got a call asking if he was okay. He said, yeah, I'm fine, why? The three friends he was just walking with had just been killed. One million people have been told to move south. They bombed the south. Outside our home is massive football pitches where normally you see the kids and the, the kid men running around. And now people are sleeping outside and yet they still are dropping bombs on them. Morgues are full. We're using ice cream trucks for the dead. My brother has not came home from four days as he's not stopped working in the hospital. But he's starting to say that he can no longer treat anyone because there are no supplies and that the dead are arriving in mere body parts. Families like mine are having to move and they are having to say goodbye to each other as if it's the last time. My aunt said goodbye to her daughter, Sarah, and her granddaughter, who was going to a different part of Gaza City. Uh, a different part of Gaza, and they said goodbye like it's the last time. My dad yesterday, when we hoped he would leave, said goodbye to my grandmother for what we thought was the last time. Every person in Gaza is waiting to die. Every person in Gaza is being terrorized. And the Israeli Defense Minister described us as human animals. Conference, I tell you, we are not. We are a proud people. We love to sing and dance and eat and sit by the beach. We're loud, really loud. <laughs> and we love hard. We love to learn and we are warm. We have dreams and we have goals. So I ask, let us survive. Let us live in peace. And I beg and I plead, give the children of Gaza a chance of life. Let my niece Leila, my nephews Majid, Amjid, and my new, newest nephew Amir, eight weeks old, let them survive. And this can only happen 
when the world leaders use diplomacy instead of weaponising and strive for peace over war. This can stop if those in power want it to. Thank you, Conference. Please support the motion.